Hey YouTube, Shukun Shinobi here with a review of the Chogokin Chogatai King Robo Mickey and Friends. Now on all the English parts of this it does say King Robot Mickey and Friends, but it says Robo on the box in the Kana. Now granted Robo means robot, but it's not Roboto, it's Robo. So I'm just going with Robo because it sounds cooler. Uh, this is a Chogokin release, uh, my first Chogokin release, even though King Robo doesn't really have too much die cast in him, he's still a Chogokin release nonetheless. Um, basically, this is a Disney robot combiner, as you can see up here. Uh, it's comprised of Mickey, Donald, Daisy, a boat representing Steamboat Willie, Goofy, and Pluto. All together to make a kind of neat looking robot. Um, the, the toy has some flaws, I'll give it that, but it's still neat looking, I think, overall. This is a first release, so it does include six little postcards of the characters as like their little Sentai characters. So uh, we'll take a look at those. Um, elsewhere on the box, we do have our cast of characters uh, Ace, Willie, Land, Goofy, Diver, Donald, uh, Jet, Mickey. Sky Mini, Aqua Daisy, and Dash Pluto, if I remembered all those correctly. Uh, right on that side. And the back, once again, shows all of the little Jet Mickey and everything like that. Uh, the combination, it says Fantastic Formation, which is like their kind of like group together called. And then, showing the, and then showing the weapons, the Dream Stick, and the Magical Mirror down here at the bottom. So how does this Disney combiner stack up against uh, actual Sentai robots? Let's get it open and take a look. Okay, so here is everyone out of the package uh, and stuff like... Uh, bear with me because these are very fiddly, uh, kind of fragile in a lot of places as well. So kind of taking it easy and being a little bit careful. Uh, here's a ruler. Something about profits. Uh, but uh, it's in inches, so if you don't use inches then... Sorry. Uh, so, like, Mickey's about four. Mini is probably about three and a half. Goofy's the tallest at about six-ish. And such like. So you can kind of get the gist of how tall they are. Uh, Donald and da Daisy's actually taller than Donald. A little bit. A little tiny bit. Anywho. So for buying this right away, uh, Tamashi gave you this awesome pack of postcards. Uh, you got the logo, Chogatai King Robot Mickey and Friends. I still don't like the name King Robot. I like King Robo better, but what are you going to do? Nothing. So you open this up, you wonder what's inside, and you're like, bam, it's postcards. Like, legit, it says postcard. Stamp here. Stamp here, really, Tamashi, you're actually going to use this as a legit postcard? Okay, that's a thing. So, you got Mickey Mouse in Jet Mickey, Minnie Mouse in Sky Mini, Donald Duck in Diver Donald, Daisy Duck in Aqua Daisy, Pluto in Dash Pluto, and Goofy in Land Goofy. So those are all of your little components. The uh, Ace Willy is... <laughs> Ace Willy, that's just funny to me now. Uh, <laughs> isn't actually piloted by anything. It's just the head of the robot. So it doesn't get a person. Otherwise it would be like a clone of Mickey and that would be weird. So uh, very cool little guys. Um, we'll show off each robot and then com uh, change them into their combined form. So we'll kind of just do it as we go. So here's Scott, uh, Jet Mickey. And his head's really loose because it has to twist around and stuff for the transformation. But that can all turn. You do have rotation on the arms. A little bit of a joint there. Uh, none of these guys are all too posable. Everything that moves is pretty much just for uh, transformation purposes. But hey, it moves, so can't complain too bad. Uh, all these have a gimmick where they have a slider on the back of their helmets. And when you slide that around... You now have uh, a Mickey sitting there in the cockpit as opposed to the eyes. Uh, I generally just keep it as the eyes because that seems more robo-ish to me. So there we go. I'll just keep it as the eyes. And yeah, so Mickey makes the uh, main body of the, of the robot. And so things are kind of 
all over the place with him. Have to twist this head all the way around and like that so it sits flush on the back. These will hang out right here because the arms are going to slide back and I'm having horrible flashbacks on why I stopped reviewing Transformers because this can get complicated. So just like that so they kind of sit inside of there. This entire portion will twist around, open up, and these are gonna pop open just like that and kind of spin around and make their way up here and go in those clips that are on the arms. It doesn't uh, fit in there securely, um, it just kind of rests inside of there and kind of acts as a little bit of a guide to doing this as opposed to being super duper tight fit secure. So just like that and you're actually all set with uh, Mickey's components. So he will hang out just like that. Uh, moving on to Sky Mini. Uh, she is probably the most fragile one that I've dealt with in this set. Um, particularly back here. It's fixed now. But as you can see that stress mark right there. That broke right off. Um, after two transformations. So be if you get this, be really careful when you're tr uh, transforming this. I mean, you don't have to be super duper fragile, like wear gloves and like a microscope and like, oh, this needs to go here, and, like in two centimeters. And I don't know what I'm saying. But you don't have to be super duper fragile with it, but just be careful. Don't like go pulling on stuff and stuff, stuff, stuff. Uh, but yeah, be careful with that. It's fine now. I just dabbed some super glue in there and it seems to be holding just fine. So uh, this is the port for the head. So you can kind of guess how that's going to be situated. It just kind of hangs out back here. Minnie's trans Minnie's kind of useless, honestly. Uh, she's got a lot of weird... I don't know, not proportions, but... This kind of functions just don't particularly work all that well. And I kind of wish like her and Mickey shared a robot or something and to have a more cohesive body. But uh, I mean it's not a, a horrible deal or anything like that. It's it's alright, but I don't know, I just don't like the way that the body comes together on this. So these open up to make the little chest uh, chest pieces. And then this entire section opens up and folds in some fashion or another. So line it up just like that and then snap that in, same on the other side. These you don't really have to worry too much about, those will line themselves up properly later on. And then these will just kind of rest back here to make a series of like jet boosters. So her head literally just kind of hangs out right back there. And then uh, obviously you can see the pegs inside there and on uh, Mini here. Line those up so that these chest panels um, are in front. And then just kind of keep fiddling with it until it locks. And then up here you're going to put these feet into these little slots on the Mini uh, helmet piece area. Just like that. So everything is kind of together here for the body. Like I said, the proportions on the body just are very strange. Um, I kind of wish things worked out a little bit better. Uh, inside here where these pieces go, you can kind of uh, fiddle around with those a little bit. You can see how it's curved right there to kind of give room for Mickey's head. And then these pieces are open to give room for uh, Mickey's ears. So just kind of line those up wherever you feel is best. I try to get it as close to the body as possible to allow a little bit of arm articulation, which there isn't much on this release, but not too bad. I just think Mini is kind of pointless, uh, and the head hanging out back there kind of irritates me a little bit. But there's your body. Uh, Donald and Daisy are pretty much the same exact toy um, in pretty much every single way. Her uh, arms are open. And that's really about it in terms of uh, overall design. Obviously, the head sculpts are different. but uh, So those basically just feature the same level of 
articulation as all of the other pieces in this toy with a little bit of added leg articulation because of transformation. Turn this around, flip it up. These actually uh, go right up here, the arms, they just fold just like that and hang out right up here. You can swing them down, which you'll see in a minute. You can swing this section down like it's supposed to. Flip up the connector port. And then this will fold up. Swing the hand out. I do have the weapon hands on there right now. And then these will actually fold around, my bad. To kind of cover up that open area. And there you have the hand. Like I said, you can swing these down underneath the, uh, the Donald head, if you so wish. Just like that, and maybe give it a little bit of a more coherent look. Um, only issue with that is if you decide to turn this around so that you can use the uh, elbow articulation, which isn't really in the elbow, it's in the arm. But uh, it kind of rubs up a little bit there, so I don't know whether that would uh, create the paint over time. But I just prefer to stick to the actual transformation, just keep it up here. Uh, it's not so bad on Donald as it is on Daisy. And like I said, if you the actual full transformation and design has the arm like this. But if you twist this around so that this opening is right here, because of how his transformation works, that swivel does give you some uh, elbow articulation. So I kind of just prefer to keep it like this so that he actually has an elbow. And it looks a little bit more dynamic than just being a brick. Take your body and he'll attach right over here. This uh, joint right up here is kind of loose. So you need to be a little bit careful with it. Line these up properly. They only go in one way, so if it's not fitting in, just keep twisting that silver port until it's in the direction that it's supposed to go. No clicks or anything like that. It just kind of frictions itself in there. Um, I never really had too big of problems with it coming out, but uh, your mileage may vary on that. And as you can see, these uh, little chest flaps up here get in the way of moving this arm around. So that's why I like having the elbow articulation because it doesn't really, you don't really have to move the shoulder in order to get it in a little bit more of a dynamic pose. Because uh, otherwise you basically just have a typical Sentai mech and it just with no articulation at all, it just goes like this and stuff. So I kind of like to do it like that. Uh, Daisy is the same exact everything with, uh, with Donald, so nothing new with her. Like I said, I have the... Uh, weapon holding hands in there. Uh, they default come with, uh, what do you want to call them? Fists. That's what they're called, fists. And I will show those in a second, but uh, what's the point of having weapons if you're not going to hold them? So I just went with the weapon holding hands. And so there we go. There is a little bit of movement in the arm here. As you can hear that ratchet, so it will hold its bend a little bit as long as you click on that ratchet. So just be a little bit uh, careful when you're doing that. Just like that. So he's a little bit more outwards, you could say. Set that back down and now we will work on the legs. Here's Land Goofy. He's kind of finicky. His He's got this whole chicken leg thing going on. Uh, and so he can't really stand straight. Because when you try to get him to stand straight, if you do it just right, he can stay okay. But if the table shakes or something like that, he does, the joint there is really weak. So oftentimes if I'm having him just stand here, he is leaning forward, which makes his legs look really weird. But that's okay. Uh, his transformation is pretty simple. Just swing this entire section up and around, just like that. These portions are going to peg in right here, and then there's a slider right there on the uh, arms that just kind of peg right in. It's not a tight fit or anything like that. Um, for here, you can keep them straight. You can bend them back. It doesn't really matter for those. 
and then these are going to slide into each other just like that and then peg together right there and then line that up. There is a little bit of sideways movement on this leg just because of how the feet work on Goofy. And then you want to line up his head appropriately. Uh, like I said, all these do have the slider gimmick. I didn't bother showing it off on the others. But it's just a little pilot inside of there. You can barely even see it, really. So Not that big of a deal. But line up the head appropriately, and you're good to go for now. And lastly, we have Pluto. Uh, Pluto is a small little guy. Reminds me a lot of Rush from Mega Man. Uh, his mouth can open, I believe. No, it can't. I lied. Go figure. So, pretty much a, a very simple, simple transformation for him. That's going to go right inside that socket right there. It's going to fold up back here, and these are going to fold up around to make the foot. Just like that, so that's his little foot mode. Just like that. Where is the rest of the leg, Shuki? Well, that is in this. His uh, kennel is made up of the Dream Stick, the uh, Magic Mirror, I believe. And uh, so these, those are the weapons. And then the mirror portion just kind of pops right off. As you can see, it's connected by that clip right there. So just pop that off. Unfold all of this. Swing that around. And then here's the mirror. And yes, here's the dream stick. This doesn't actually have any sort of hinges or anything like that. So uh, The kennel can kind of basically transform how you think it would. Uh, this opens right up. Swing it around. And there you go. So it still has the doghouse shape. So it kind of looks like the magic mirror didn't come from the kennel. So that's kind of a nice touch, I think. Swing that around. Uh, Pluto is just going to slide right in here. Clip into place. And then Goofy's going to clip in right up here. So there you go with them. And voila, you have the base of your robot. Now, as you can see, he is leaning this way. Um, Goofy's a little bit taller than the Pluto portion is. So, you're kind of stuck with this robot that's always leaning a little bit. Um, if you keep fiddling with him, eventually you might find a sweet spot where he isn't as leaning. Like, you can do that to try to straighten it out, but it, it doesn't really work. They needed to make this kennel portion just a hair bigger. This portion right here, just a hair longer in order to get him to, to be straight. But it's not that big of a deal. Once you have it together, it isn't as noticeable as it is right now. So that's always a, a good thing to kind of make note of. And then this section right here will just peg into place. You have to swing this part open from underneath. Swing that part open, and that's going to connect over this part this portion right here clip into place somewhere up there and then it's gonna take a lot of fiddling to kinda get his center of balance situated uh, because of just how these things work he's uh, a little bit of an unstable mess But there we go and then right up here we'll take Ace Willy Open up the head right here, swing that down to reveal the Gundam-esque helmet, and then that will just slide right on, clip into place. Now he does have quite a bit of head articulation, so you can look to the left, right, all around. Uh, it will pop up every now and then, just press it back down, it's not really that big of a deal. It's a lot of head articulation, which is actually pretty nice. Um, unfortunately, like the rest of the figure has very minimal levels of articulation. Like I said, you can trick the transformation a little bit to get some uh, some movement in there. And you do have that uh, bicep swivel right up here at near where the elbow is. 
to get a little bit more articulation in the arms. But like I said, you can't bring this forward because of these clips right here, the these uh, chest plate. So you can't swing the arm forward or back really because that joint in there is just really tight. And so if you try to move it too much, it'll just pop right out. So that is a little bit of a design flaw, but it's not that huge of a deal. Um, leg articulation wise, this one can swivel like this. This one clips in so it can't, but it can do the swivel down there. And this one can't right there. So they, they've got like the same articulation, but in different spaces. So it's very incoherent in that part. Uh, down here, the heads can act as a little bit of a brace if you want to push them all the way to the ground. Um, otherwise, they just rest back here on Pluto's back paws that you can't see. Right there on Pluto's back paws and then this plate on uh, Goofy act as a balancer. So as you can see, he is quite a bit back heavy just because these legs aren't really all that good. So if you lean him forward a little bit, there we go. Uh, and he's not all that bad. All right, that's a fair amount of him in one shot. Uh, the dream stick can go in either hand, but just pop off the bottom, swing that through, then peg the bottom back on. Just like so. So now he's got the dream stick. Swing that around a little bit. The mirror slides right into the hand. Um, I prefer to swing it around a little bit, just so you can see more of the robot. Um, otherwise, that mirror takes up a lot of the real estate of the front of the robot, and it just kind of ruins the appearance for the most part, I think. So, really cool overall. I love the way he looks. I am a huge Disney fan. Um, I grew up with Disney. I still watch all of like the Disney Pixar movies and even normal Disney movies. Um, and I'm in love with the Disney characters. I grew up with them, so I have a, a passion for for like Mickey and Donald and Goofy and everyone. That's why I like Kingdom Hearts. But, <laughs> but uh, I just like this concept of a robot that is made up of these Disney characters that are piloting robotic versions of themselves. And I think that concept's really cool. It basically turns Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Goofy, Pluto, and Daisy into a Sentai team. And that's what those postcards show, basically, is them in, like, Sentai suits, even though they're more like like piloting suits. But I like to pretend. Um, in fact, this arm got messed up. There we go. Uh, and the coherency of the robots actually very wild. Um, it's symmetrical up on top because Daisy and Donald are the same exact mold. Down here, it's symmetrical-ish. The designs are fairly similar in the way that the legs are structured. But the frontal, just decorative designs are very wild and out there. Uh, plus, you do get the traditional kind of Sentai color scheme going on with uh, like a bunch of different colors that are clashing. So I really like the way that it looks overall. It's a nice mix of like a Sentai Robo, a Gundam, uh, and Disney all wrapped up in one. And I, I think they pulled it off really well. Um, Chogokin wise, I don't have any Chogokins to actually compare it to outside of the Super Robot Chogokins. So I'm not sure if not having a lot of diecast is a new trend with Chogokin releases. But this uh, release doesn't have too much diecast pieces into it. Each of the robots' body uh, is made up of diecast. Sans Pluto might not. Pluto, I think, has this piece diecast right here. Uh, so each of the, the robots' bodies are all made up of diecast. But outside of that, there really isn't too much diecast going on here. But there's just enough to give it a lot of heft um, without raising the cost significantly. And honestly, diecast is very fiddly when it comes to combiner robots and stuff. So I don't really mind the fact that they ditched the diecast um, on this release. Um, Price-wise, I think I got mine for like 9400 Whatever Ami Ami's price was is what I got this for. Retail release, it's like 12000 or something like that, $13,000, uh, which is basically about $130. Uh, for that much, it's hard to recommend this, uh, considering like Cure Usion, you can get them for about 55 or so. 
and he's a little bit more playable than this one is. However, the individual modes are very unique, and I do like the individual modes quite a bit. Um, and I even like the displayed mode uh, for the co combination quite a bit. I Design-wise, I wish Mini had more of a function than serving as basically a backpack. Uh, I wish she was like either a weapon or a bigger body combination with Mickey or something like that. Uh, so seeing Minnie just get shoved off to the back is kind of annoying to me. But uh, because of how important Minnie is to like Disney, I feel like she should be more up front than, say, Daisy. But that's an argument for a different day. Um, overall, I really like what they did. Um, it is very finicky as a toy. It uh, has a little bit of problems holding together at some points. Uh, some of the clips and stuff are very fragile. So you have to be careful. Like I said, that clip on uh, Minnie's backpack broke. Um, but that's the only breakage I've had so far with this after probably about six or so transformations. Seven, I think, including this one. Uh, so that's that's not horrible considering how many little fragile pieces there are on this. So your mileage may vary in terms of quality. But overall, I really do like it. I wish it was cheaper. The price tag is very expensive. So unless you're a diehard Disney fan, um, I don't really fully recommend this but if you're as a huge disney fan as i am then by all means try to hunt this down and pick it up it is a very cool little robot and uh, overall i really like what they did despite the massive amount of flaws with it uh i still really enjoy it and i am glad that i picked it up and last but not least the combined robot is about nine inches tall so give or take it is a lot smaller than a traditional sentai robot but it's still bigger than like a figure art or anything like that. So you can check out shukwinshrobe.com for list updates to my reviews and hauls. And of course, check out Riders, Rangers, and Rambles, the podcast for your latest token news in the greatest way possible. And of course, you can buy this and more at cstoysjapan.com. So take care and have a great one. Bye.